Now we're going to do something a little different in this lecture because we have the mitosis background. We've done all the notes for what happens in mitosis and as I've said a bajillion for nillion times, mitosis and meiosis are really, really similar. So I'm just going to go directly to our animation and we're going to look, we're going to get ourselves to prophase one in a cell that's about to go through meiosis. The significant thing that happens in prophase one is that crossing over takes place. Crossing over happens between homologs and we're gonna look at what that actually looks like. To get us here to prophase one of meiosis, look, does this look familiar? We're just gonna throw the scrambled cell. Like I think I changed the color of the DNA just for fun. Cause you know, why not? I don't have anything else to do except for change DNA colors. Um, we have some arguments to have about that. But this looks really familiar, doesn't it? And if we watch meiosis happening, we can go through all of our stages of interphase. We can be like, dude, this is exactly the same as in mitosis. If we were to peek at our chromosomes, let's just wind up that DNA just to look you can see that I've actually drawn three different chromosomes here. Easier to do that when I can copy and paste versus doing it by hand, right? If you have to deal with three different chromosomes, but convince yourself, do you see my three homologs? Do you see my homologous pairs? Can you predict what might happen? If I showed this to you, would you know that that cell was in G1 of interphase? Yeah, there, there's no sisters. We haven't duplicated, replicated, duplicated our DNA yet. So if we go into S, at the beginning it looks like a tangle, and at the end it looks like a double tangle. Can you predict what the chromosomes would look like if we peeked at our chromosomes? They look like little X's, totally what we would expect. Each chromosome now has a sister chromatid attached at the centromere. Remember how I told you, I don't know, do you remember things that I tell you? Remember how I told you that you could count centromeres to find out how many chromosomes you have in a cell? This cell has one, two, three, four, five, six total chromosomes, even though we doubled our DNA. Convince yourself, get cozy with that. It's the same over and over and over again. All right, G2, we have doubled the DNA, but how fun. Now we can go into prophase. What are you going to predict is going to happen in prophase? Prophase one. Okay, you caught me. I just said we're going to go into prophase. If I say that to you, you say, oh, we're going through mitosis rigs because prophase is a stage in mitosis. You have to add a one or a two if you're going to talk about meiosis. That's enough. If you say we're entering prophase one, we know you're going through meiosis. You don't have to say prophase one of meiosis. You can. I often do because I want to burn into my brain that I have to keep the number to match it to meiosis. If I don't have that number on there, it's I'm talking about mitosis. Okay, prophase one. This is unique. There are going to be some unique things. Push pause and predict. What are the things that you think might not be unique that you would be seeing here in prophase one? Well, super significant. Almost everything's identical. The nuclear envelope dissolves. The centrioles start moving. The nucleolus disappears. And the chromosomes condense. So they become more tightly condensed. But what is something else that you see that is happening? Okay, we'll just go back to there. What you are seeing 
This is not yet crossing over, even though I hinted that crossing over was going to take place. What's happening? How would you describe this? What is the thing that's different that's happening right now in this visual? The homologs are hooking up. And there's no other way. I'm sure there are scientific words to say about how we describe this. But the bottom line is the homologs hook together. They literally connect. During prophase one, because they're connected to each other, this next amazing thing can happen, which is crossing over. Write it down. Crossing over occurs in prophase one. Can you predict what crossing over might be? Crossing over, we're talking about homologs just hooked up. Well, let's see how, time out, not technical foul, time out. Let's look at crossing over. So remember our homologs, and this is all review, right? Which is awesome. Keep reviewing, predict, push pause, see if you can guess what's gonna happen. We have our egg parent and our sperm parent, which are homologous chromosomes. Each one of these guys has, look, do you see what arrows I just put in? What is the word that's gonna go under those arrows? Sister chromatids. So each homologous chromosome has sister chromatids because of what? S, because of S in interphase. We doubled our DNA. Okay, what do you think that is representing? Those are genes. So I've just drawn some weird genes on these chromosomes and look, we can have genes on both sides and they're homologs. So if we have genes in those places on one homolog, we will have it on the other. Same place, same trait, same gene, but let's throw some letters in there. We have the A gene and the B gene. Predict what are sisters going to look like? I think sisters would come next. What letters are we going to put on our sister chromatids? Identical. No matter what that letter was when I first threw it on there, the sister has the identical letter. What about the homolog? Does it have to be a big A and a big B on the homolog? Nope. I went rogue. I went diverse. I went genetically diverse and we have a different allele for the same gene on the sperm parents chromosomes. But the sperm parents sister chromatids have the same identical alleles. Are you good? Now, what do you think happens with crossing over? Take a look. Do you agree that the, where the new arrows showed up, can you see my, my mouse? My mouse is circling the new arrows that just showed up. Something's going to happen right here. <laughs> Crossing over is going to take place. The homologs have to be connected to each other to make this occur. Oh, those are alleles of the same gene. We already talked about that but what's gonna happen right there? The homologs get very close together and they literally swap alleles. That's what crossing over is. They do, hmm, they swap the same genes. So they will actually, they, it's like a true story. They like take off, one of them takes off the right arm and it's like if my kid were in here and I gave him my right arm and he gave me his right arm, I would get the better deal on that. <laughs> but cool, we traded right arms. We both still have right arms. We both, both homologs still have the A gene, but they just swapped out the allele. 
Sometimes that swap, if both chromosomes have the same allele, that swap isn't going to increase genetic diversity, but sometimes it does increase genetic diversity. Most of the time it does. And you swap an entire chunk of DNA and then you end up with a mix of chromosomes from your sperm parent and your egg parent. This is wild. Prophase 1 results in that crossing over. Now, I think I have a few more. Um, I want to show it happening here before we get into metaphase. There. I just made all of them swap a little chunk of DNA. I think it's important to remember that crossing over is random, which also should just blow your mind. Like, it's like... Well, do you want to switch arms today or do you want to switch legs? Oh, let's do legs. Okay. Again, my kid would get a, a worse deal. I'd be on the better end of the deal if I swapped a leg with my kid. That's really, my legs are much shorter than my kids. This would not be entirely efficient. It's not a great analogy. As you can see, the chromosomes swap chunks of DNA and you can swap identical chunks. All right, how do you feel? What do you think is coming next? I'm just gonna stop our visual here. Let's head toward metaphase one and another like mind-blowingly wild source of genetic diversity in the process of meiosis.